Hello and welcome back ladies and gentlemen to another Historical Humans Reacts and today we have yet another follow-up update from the missing artifacts out of the British Museum. Re authorities have officially concluded their review and their investigation and there's still over a thousand objects still missing. Ah <laughs> uh, uh, yes. Been a fun journey here. Uh watching the British Museum uh uh slowly implode over the uh over the past year or two. Uh oh, and it is so uh, it's going to continue imploding uh as they have theorized now uh with uh what has been many people's worst fears with the thefts. Uh, that a number of the artifacts were sold for scrap as the metal itself that they are made out of is valuable but the but the form that they are in as a historical artifact makes them traceable so you scrap you melt it down and scrap it yeah and of the uh 1500 presumed items around 350 of the items of the collection had gold mounts or gems missing and 140 had been damaged by tools and just 351 of the stolen items have been fully recovered and the majority of them have become have uh, been found because of an antiquities do dealer Itai Gradel who is the person that warned authorities that the thefts may be occurring but his warnings were fallen on deaf ears. So he's the one that also managed to trace back most of the ones that had gone through his his dealership. But like Colm said, most of them had been sold for scrap and melted down and torn apart. And it's it's a honest to goodness tragedy. Yeah. Yeah, these are things that can you know that can never be made again. History it's is not a because... finite resource. Yeah. It's not because, oh, we don't know how to cast metal anymore. It's because we are not, you know, King James of England. We we don't make that stuff anymore. We have no need for it. Uh, the only need for it is to remember who we were, where we come from, what was happening at that time. So, you know, we can't just make another one. We don't have a time machine. We can't just pop out and get a new ring it's it, there or it's gone and nine times out of ten it's gone because yeah. stuff like this someone sold it out of profit they didn't bless you <laughs> i thankfully i muted in time but they didn't steal it for for antiqu antiquities dealing yeah. they weren't stealing it to pawn off they were yeah. melting it down for scrap value and that is like there's something to be said about the the illicit antiquities market however when it comes down to destroying these artifacts to destroying these historic uh, just vessels of time and people and ingenuity you're committing a crime against humanity and i know that sounds dramatic but these really are limited resources there aren't more of them we're not finding more of them we're finding less and less because there's only so many out there yeah <sighs> yeah, yeah yeah no this is this is this is depriving the future of the past and when you do that you bankrupt both and and the museum introduced a policy that now includes a buddy system in which the different departments would be paired to encourage a two-way flow of information because w the whole reason this happened was the departments were so isolated and so like in their own bubble that nobody realized this was happening and as a part of the act of um the public records requests the museum is now completing full digitization and documentation of all of their collections all of them which which to, which for a museum that claims to be the quintessential museum the best museum for all me, things museum related uh seems about oh i don't know 20 to 30 years behind i so okay this is the one thing i will defend the british museum please on. do please defend them on it i i will say 
it has this museums and institutions have this converse effect where digitization for small institutions is easier because they have lower amounts of artifacts less set less areas less sections less work to be done larger institutions like the british museum that have millions of artifacts and millions of pieces in their collection you're lo you're talking hundreds of thousands of pages worth of spreadsheets item catalogs accession numbers like yeah, especially it, it, it over is. 100 years yeah it is it is massive I have two things to say to that, though. Number one, this uh, change in policy and this uh, motion by the British Museum makes it feel like they're only just starting to consider the idea of digitization now, which uh, is woefully behind if this is the beginning of their journey. I and guarantee two, they have started before, but I guarantee that most of their starting before is them digit digitizing their prominent displays and yeah. their new displays. I guarantee there were old collections just buried in the stacks, which is what- yeah, That's the existence of old collections. Yeah, this, they're always buried. Uh, number two, if the British Museum has too much stuff, we can always use the magic word, repatriation. Look. Which they will never do. They're never gonna do it because how do they know they're not going to do a display upon all these things they stole two centuries ago? I mean, oh, let's, um, acquired. 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 It's called acquisitions. No one look. No one look <laughs> British Listen. Museum acquisitions. Oh, let's be honest. <laughs> They'd rather turn the Elgin marbles into someone's floor tiles than uh, return them to Greece. <laughs> And the, the part that I truly find appalling, and I understand it from a legal point, but the person who is accused of the thefts, a former employee by the name of Peter Higgs, is not cooperating with the search for items still missing, according to the BBC. In his position as a senior curator of Greek and Roman art, Higgs allegedly allegedly pocketed artifacts from gold jewelry to semi-precious stones over the course of years before listing them for sale on ebay but here's the part that i find ridiculous is i understand to some degree not cooperating just as like a prevention of admission of guilt mm -hmm. however this is definitely one of those situations where i feel like if you cooperated you're going to get a lot easier of a sentence and a lot less of a slap, like more of a slap on, well, you're going to get punished. You're going to go to jail, but hopefully it's like five years instead of 50. But well, I mean, he, 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 he's a historian who sold history for a wad of cash. I think the concept morally bankrupt applies, like, you know, assuming the charges against him are true, which, uh, I am not a member of the, uh, legal profession i'm a member of the public and i am allowed to do that <laughs> yeah and we we I'd talked about in previous so. episodes how mr higgs was linked to the thefts but just this is a tragic continuation of a really sad story and it's a continuation because it's not over yet because over a thousand artifacts still remain missing and we're starting to get the inclination that that might continue to be the case where many objects are forever missing or forever permanently mutilated because of this man's greed. Yeah. But on that tragic note, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next video.